Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to what is scarily my third trimester video. Um, I can't believe how quickly it's gone, I think I've said that all the way through but I honestly cannot believe how fast this is going. When you think of like 9 months or 40 weeks, um, yeah you just, you think it's, you know, going to take so so long it's pretty much the majority of a year bar three months and yeah I'm already in my third trimester which is super super scary I was going to update you yesterday yesterday I was 29 weeks um so definitely in my third trimester now but I had a bit of an emotional roller coaster um at 28 weeks I went for my gestational diabetes test which is not pleasant it's very boring as well um but it basically means fasting from midnight until your appointment my appointment was at 8 35 something like that i didn't get end up getting seen until five to nine so that was great um and they take some blood tests from you um then you get given a very sugary drink which to be fair a lot of people said it was horrible but I didn't find it too bad it was just like an extra sugary capricorn um so it wasn't too bad and then you have to sit and wait well, you can walk around but you have to um hang around for two hours you're not allowed to leave the hospital area you can walk the ground you can walk like up and down corridors and stuff but you have to come back after your two hours um whereby you then have another blood test Hence why I'm covered in bruises. <laughs> um, yeah, and then they send that away or test it there, I don't really know. Um, and then they phone you back with the results, usually within 24 to 48 hours. Um, as I say, I had mine in the morning, which I think they, they do anyway, because obviously you're fasting, it's easier to fast overnight. Um, and I had a phone call that evening about seven-ish to say that I had tested positive for gestational diabetes, which is great. Not. Um, it was the one thing that I really didn't want to get because there's a lot of, you can do this, you can't do that. Like, yeah, it's not fun. Um, but it is what it is i've obviously got it i've got to live with it now for the next however long that i'm pregnant for and just fingers crossed hope that it goes away once baby is here because there is a chance that it could stay and that it could de develop into type 2 diabetes which obviously i don't want um so yeah that was a bit of a bummer especially because with my extreme morning sickness which if you're wondering, I've still got, I'm still on my tablets, um, but the only thing that alleviates that is having something sweet, which obviously now I can't have, so I feel like I'm a bit, not quite back to square one, but very much there. Um, yeah. So I was a bit of a wreck yesterday, and a bit this morning as well, this afternoon as I film this. Um, just because it's a minefield they basically said that basically said at the hospital um yesterday when i went because i had to have blood sugar test training which was a very long time um but they basically said that in theory i shouldn't have to change much of my diet it just needs to be more balanced and i might have to cut out you know like the donuts and stuff which is heartbreaking for me but thankfully I found out now and not a lot earlier like some people do um because I think I probably would have gone absolutely mad <laughs> I'd have gone round the twist um if I'd had to give up donuts at like 15 16 weeks <sighs> um what else to update you on I had some more blood tests done to check what baby's blood group is and baby is positive 
which means that I also need to get my anti-D injection, which I'm going to get tomorrow. Um, because basically our, our bloods are two different ones that aren't obviously compatible. Um, and it can be really dangerous for baby girls. So I need to get that injection tomorrow. Um, I also had a scan yesterday because now that I've been confirmed with gestational diabetes, I had to have a growth scan and I've got some more booked in as well. So as much as I didn't want the gestational diabetes, it is nice to see baby girl on the screen because after my 20 week appointment, I kind of set myself up that I wouldn't see her on screen again and I'd only see her when she was born. Um, so yeah, like that's a little positive to come out of it. At least I can see her wriggling away on screen. Um, but yeah, so other than those little nuggets of information to share, I said symptoms wise, like I say, I've still got my sickness. I'm still on tablets for that. Um, I've lost my appetite, but I don't know if that's more because of the diabetes in the sense of I just can't work out what I can and can't eat at the minute. Um, so I've kind of lost my love of food because everything that I love, I can't have basically. Um, I constantly feel hungry. <laughs> but again, I don't know if that's because I might be under eating slightly because it's just such a minefield. I can feel like my tummy's going to rumble in a minute. Um, <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> but it's like a double-edged sword because I'm awake from like two, three o'clock in the morning, um, usually until about six and then I normally go back to bed, but I had a huge workload to do this morning, so I didn't get to go back to bed, sadly. So I'm just plowing on through. Um, yeah, other than that, the only thing that's really symptom-wise is that, oh, my arm's aching, <laughs> no. Um, symptoms-wise is that my back hurts a lot, lot more than it did. Like I, this morning I hoovered and just doing that, bearing in mind it's an upright, you know, handheld hoover thing. I don't have to bend over. I don't really have to put much effort in because it's just clearing like a little layer of dust. It's not a huge clean. Um, and yeah, I had to sit down because my back was just too painful. I did dishes this morning and after that I had to sit down because it was really hurting. Um, I'm all right when I've sat down at the minute, but I think it's just the strain of my bump, which I'll show you in a minute. And also because obviously my boobs are a lot bigger. Um, as you can see, they're like under my chest, <laughs> under my chest. As you can see, they're like under my chin. They feel like they're really like high up. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think that's, oh. I think that's everything to update you on. I'm just going to show you bump from here because I just can't be asked to get up. So yeah, this is bump. She's looking. She's getting there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I need to go and prick my finger now, which is not fun. I will just say, if you are squeamish or don't like the sight of blood, then maybe just skip the next 30 seconds or so. Um, because yeah, it's not pleasant. <laughs> Got my sharp spin, Got my machine. I've already loaded up a new needle. Got my strip. for device. Pop that in. I'm running out of fingers, they're starting to bruise as well, they're being really sore already, so I don't know where to do this next one. That one bruised as well. The one I did this morning didn't bruise, but the rest of them have. Right. Oh that's nice. Okay, 
I can't work out if I've done one there, but I don't think I've done one there, so where have I? Anyway, here goes. the machine stinging like a bitch <laughs> 4.5 okay that's good that is good cool right and now I'm going to say goodbye for this little clip because I need to sync it to my phone so that it sends it to the hospital and then we'll um, yeah can you enjoy the rest of my day well a long time no speak on this video anyway um i'm now 37 plus four i think um oh, which yeah it's gone so so quickly i intended to do like a little update every week the same as i did in like previous videos or tried to at least um i certainly had a lot more clips in previous videos but for me, I went through quite a period from like 28 weeks to, I'd say 32, 33 weeks where nothing really changed. Um, I have written some notes, so if I keep looking over it, it's because I don't want to miss anything that, you know, has gone on in that time. Um, but most of the third trimester during that time that I've just mentioned was kind of taken up with gestational diabetes. If you didn't know, I was diagnosed at 28 or 29 weeks. I think I mentioned it in a previous clip just now. Um, so that was a bit of a, like a bit of a learning curve and everything for me. Um, I did do a video during Vlogmas, which I'll try my best to link down below which kind of goes more into the gestational diabetes and things like that. Um, but I feel like that time was just taken up with learning what I could and couldn't eat because everybody is obviously different. Um, as well as I was just constantly thinking about food. I, I, I'm not so bad now. I kind of got into the gist of it. And I will say since filming that gestational diabetes video, it does get easier. Not necessary to manage, but to know what things you can eat um so if you are diagnosed like take it from me it does get easier in the mindset of what you can eat i can't say it gets easier in the actually controlling your cravings and all things like that because it doesn't i'm sorry to say but i'm not going to sugarcoat it excuse the pun um but yeah i just feel like it was kind of taken up a lot more with what thinking about food and drink thinking about what I could eat, trying to ignore all the things I couldn't eat, like the food shops were horrendous, there was a point where I was like seriously contemplating sending Ash with a shopping list and saying I'm not going to step foot inside a shop because it was just that bad, seeing all this food like walking down the aisles and everything that you just couldn't have, um, but I persevered, I got through it and I kept checking labels, um, I don't think I'm ever going to look at food the same again, to be honest. I think I'm always just going to be checking labels to see what's in there. Um, but yeah, so I feel like those weeks were more just like mentally draining for me. Um, I was very, very emotional, which is probably why I didn't come on camera to talk about things. Because I think if I spoke about it, I would just probably burst into tears, basically. Um... I've had several reds, they're not overly concerned, in fact they think I've done pretty well and I'm still at 37 weeks, still diet controlled at the minute. Um, so I'm very happy about that at least. <laughs> um, I've even managed to tolerate a couple of McDonald's, albeit a happy meal, not a full meal, but something is better than nothing. When, you, when you've when you got that craving you have to get something. Um, so yeah, like overall I am feeling a lot more positive about it. I know that if I have any future pregnancies that they're going to test a lot earlier. So I mean, if this is your second or third or any other number of 
pregnancy with gestational diabetes I do apologize because I can only imagine being diagnosed at like 10 16 weeks like it's a long slog it's felt a long slog for me um but I think I'm just positive now because we're at the end of the line kind of thing um but yeah definitely a lot more emotional I don't know if that's hormones or whether that is the gestational diabetes I'd imagine it's a bit of both but mainly the diabetes because every time I got that red mark on there because obviously it goes straight through to the hospital when using the app um I just kind of felt like I'd failed like I was a bad mum and she's not even here yet um and I know I'm not and I know it's just one of those things and I know a few years ago it would never have been tested like it certainly wasn't tested when my mum was pregnant um and for like people that have been pregnant since then it wasn't tested until relatively recently so I know it's not be me being a bad mum, it's just a precaution, but it doesn't make it any easier. On to other symptoms. I feel massive. I have filmed a little clip, which I will insert now of my bump so that you can see. So yeah, I feel absolutely massive. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've put indigestion as well, which does not help. However, the only thing I found that I can take that doesn't spike my levels or anything like that I haven't been to the doctor for a prescription because my doctor's surgery only opens Monday to Friday which is obviously standard but something stupid like 8 30 until 12 and when you've got quite a few people trying to phone in and get appointments and things it's just it's just chaotic um so I've just kind of persevered and the only thing that I can find that alleviates that indigestion is actually drinking sips of cold water which then makes me burp which then makes me feel better so that's what we're working with on that score um but yeah I definitely feel huge although I do think my bump has dropped massively to the point when I sit now <laughs> it sounds really stupid but it kind of like sticks to my legs if my leggings aren't in between and it just makes me feel uncomfortable so I have to keep like lifting my bump up to like unstick it from my legs it's the weirdest feeling I don't like it and I can't wait for that feeling to go away to be honest I'm not going to rush into weight loss um I'm just going to enjoy like baby girl being here but that is definitely something that I can't wait for it to be over I'm not going to lie um and I think from being so big as well now I'm definitely out of breath not in the sense of talking I feel like I can talk a lot quicker again now um I don't have that like issue of being mid conversation and having to stop because I can't breathe but I feel more out of breath and very tight chested at times if I overdo it slightly but only on the simple things I could do the dishes and then suddenly come over all feeling like tight chested and out of breath like things like that um so then I've got to sit down which obviously takes its time which means my to-do list is never done um because I'm constantly having to sit down but it's just a little few weeks of that um and then hopefully that will subside I hope I hope it's nothing more serious they don't think it is so I think we're all good um another thing is my feet and ankles have really been swelling they really swelled over Christmas um but I think it's because you they swell whether I sit for too long or stand for too long and I think over Christmas obviously you know you're sat down you're enjoying food then you're enjoying presents and Christmas TV and all things like that so I did try to keep my feet elevated as much as I could but obviously it wasn't enough and I kept drinking and things like that um the midwife wasn't concerned in that sense because she said it's only really a concern sometimes in my fingers if I get it in that com combined with getting swelling in my face which I find really hard to like work out if my face is swelling I have to keep asking people because obviously you probably can tell if you see from like first trimester to now my face is obviously a lot chubbier where I've put on weight it was always inevitable gonna happen I can't say I like these like chubby cheeks that I've suddenly got and this like six roll of chin that's going on um but trying to distinguish between whether you've just got fat face at the minute um or whether it's swollen is actually quite hard work but all seems good at the minute and to be fair the swelling has gone down I've tried to get up and move a bit and then sit down and get up and move a bit and things like that and to be fair with the, the testing um 
obviously going to the toilet a lot more, washing my hands a lot more because I have to wash them in between testing because obviously I don't want any infections or anything. Um, so I'm constantly feeling like I'm, I'm up and down, which I think is helping. Which brings me on to the next bit, which is that I'm a hell of a lot more tired than I was. Um, now my bump's dropped as well, I feel like I can sleep better, which I feel is the opposite of like what a lot of people have said in the third trimester. A lot of people can't sleep. Um, I can, but I can't sleep at night, which is really annoying. Like at night, I just have got insomnia. I presume it's mental, I don't really know. Um, but I find it really hard to get to sleep. However, once I'm asleep and in that sleepy state, I could be in that sleepy state for like 10 hours, um, especially the last week or so, definitely. I presume it's my body's way of preparing for the fact that I'm not going to get much sleep for the foreseeable future. But yeah, we've been going to bed roughly between like 11 and midnight. Um, and then Ash gets up for work about six-ish, depending on what time he's starting. And he wakes me up to say goodbye and then I roll over, go back to sleep. And then I can be out for the count for another like four or five hours, to be honest. I have worried Ash a couple of times because I've obviously been deadly silent because I've been asleep. Um, and woken up and it's been like midday. So um, yeah, I'm definitely getting a lot more sleep, which then has an add-on effect with my to-do list because I kind of miss out the morning. Like even as I film this now, I've only had breakfast and done testing and watched a little bit of YouTube whilst I was doing those things. Um, but yeah, like the morning's gone, you know? And so I'm kind of filming a few bit videos all in one go before Ash gets home from work. And then I'm gonna tackle the rest of my to-do list when he's home, when it doesn't matter. I'm not like in his way. I'm not annoying him. You haven't got him shouting at the Xbox in the background all those things, or singing in the shower. Um, yeah, so it has kind of a knock-on effect, but I've kind of just accepted that my to-do list is just the things I'd like to get done. Like, it doesn't matter if it don't get done, unless there's something really, really urgent. Like, it just doesn't matter, you know? Another thing, another symptom that I thought I would mention is my lack of appetite. I got an appetite for snacks. Um, living on pom bears and cheese string cheese strings and yogurt and things like that um but i've definitely lost my appetite completely i just feel full all the time to be honest um i don't go to the loo very often i never have done i know it's a bit tmi but this is a trimester symptoms update so that's the kind of thing that you have to expect in this video um but even pre-pregnancy i wasn't regular shall we say um and it's something that I've never been concerned about because it's something that's kind of run in the family and I've had since I was a child anyway myself. Um, so like to me it's just one of those things. But I definitely say since getting bigger and bigger in pregnancy it's a lot less. Um, so I just have to keep an eye on it. And yeah, but I think that's kind of aiding the loss of appetite because I just feel full. Like, there's no room, there's a baby in there, and there's, let's face it, a load of shit. Um, <laughs> so I, I just feel completely full up, like, just, there's no room. Um, so, currently they're not worried too much at the hospital. At my last scan, they did say that baby girl had dropped her weight slightly. She dropped, is it a centile, percentile, whatever it is. I don't understand that whole graph thing at all um but they did say that she had dropped slightly but they weren't concerned um at this present time so that's good i think hand in hand with the lack of appetite also my sickness is back it seemed to like alleviate from about what should i say 31 30 31 something like that just after my previous update um it did seem to alleviate and completely went and I didn't take my tablets like I've completely come off of them. I'm still off of them now although I'm tempted to go back on them which I'm allowed to do should I need to. Um, but yeah my sickness is back but I don't know if it's because of the full feeling or if it's just because I'm in a last stage of pregnancy now. Um, but yeah 
it's not pleasant. Thankfully I've only been sick once, um, which was really disappointing. I had an omelette and I had some bacon with it. Um, and it was all like fully cooked, it was all absolutely fine. It wasn't that that made it, but I literally ate the last mouthful or went to eat the last mouthful and as it was in my mouth, I just knew I needed to run. Um, so sadly it came back up, which I was very, very disappointed about. Um, but yeah, so touch wood, that has been the only time that I've physically been sick, but the sickness and the like cloudy head feeling is definitely back. Still on the subject of food, I do feel like my gestational diabetes is getting better, which I know some people have found. Um, they say that weeks like, th I think it's 32 to 36 are the hardest. I definitely had a lot more red readings in that. Um, and then since I've hit 37 weeks, I found that my tolerance is a little bit better. I've not tried to push it too much, but I can tolerate like an extra spoonful of mash or I can tolerate a little bit of carrot, which I couldn't tolerate before. Um, and things like that. I even had like faggots the other day, which was always a no-no for me before um, because of like the gravy and everything in it as well. But they were absolutely fine. I had that with mash and loads of veg and that was fine. So I definitely think my tolerance is getting better um, and I've noticed my readings are lower the majority of the time as well. Even like things that I've been eating since diagnosis. I'm losing my voice, sorry. <coughs> but yeah, even things that I've noticed or that I was eating since being diagnosed, I've noticed that the actual number level, despite it being the same amount and the same proportion, um, like veg to potato to meat kind of thing, um, the numbers are a lot better, which is good. I did have a blue reading yesterday, which means it was under, um, which I haven't had for a very long time. I think I was like 28, 29 weeks when I had a blue reading. And that was mainly because I just didn't know what I could eat, so I was struggling. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely getting better. I've got my treat box. I can't wait to just like open it when baby girl's here. Um, it's full of all of the Christmas treats I couldn't enjoy. And I kind of feel like if I'd... Obviously, um, you can't really plan these things in advance. But if I'd just been like pregnant a few weeks before, then... I could have tolerated all of the Christmas food probably, but never mind. <laughs> um, and then really the last symptom is my backache, which I, I know I mentioned at the start of this video. Um, it's pretty much completely gone. Like I'm sat hunched over at the minute, which is probably not the best because I'm trying to sit up straight and trying to do all of the things that I can to get this baby out, basically. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've got to that stage. Like I'm done. I want her out now. Um, but yeah, my backache has completely gone. I am going to be filming a cleaning video later this afternoon, so that might change and I might get really bad back, I don't know. But on the whole, like even when I go out for a walk, I can walk faster, up straight. I'm not like halfway through thinking, oh my God, my back's killing me. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, I think where the bumps dropped, it's definitely helped and the hip pain's gone as well, so who knows whether it's because the bumps dropped or whether it's because I'm more conscious of my posture and things like that. But whatever it is, it's working and I'm not complaining. <laughs> That's everything symptom wise for my 37 week update. I will quickly point out that I'm hoping to film maybe one, maybe two more clips um, to finish this video off. However, it's all a bit up in the air at the minute. The consultant, because obviously I'm now consultant-led because of the gestational diabetes, um, I've seen or spoken to three different consultants now. The first consultant, I can't even remember if I mentioned it in my gestational diabetes video, um, was really lovely and was just like, do your best, you know, don't worry, do your best, things like that, which set my mind at ease and I just tried my best. The second consultant basically told me off when I met them in the hospital um, and basically made me feel like utter crap, I'm not gonna lie. I like literally come out of that appointment like trying to hold back the tears because I had to have another scan. So I was sat in a waiting room full of people and I didn't wanna be there crying. Um, and then the, third cons the second consultant had also said that 
I would go until 38 weeks, which obviously I'm 37 plus four now. So it would only be like a few days away and then they would induce me. Um, and then I went for my appointment just after Christmas and saw a different consultant who was the most amazing consultant I think I've ever seen. Um, which I don't mean this to sound racist in any way, shape or form. I really don't. Um, but he was of Indian or Pakistani descent. And when I saw him, I must must admit, I did think I'm not going to understand a word he said. Because I couldn't understand a word that the second consultant said. And I think he was like German and Aus or Austrian or something like that. And for somebody that's hard of hearing um, anyway, like I really, really struggled to hear what they say and to understand what they're saying um but he had like perfect English and just had like perfect bed manner this like third consultant um he spoke slowly like as soon as I went in he asked how I was how my Christmas was like it was really really friendly um and just set me at ease like because I was really really nervous about what they were going to say um but just set myself at ease and just talked me through everything and basically sat down and explained that, like there was no rush whereas the other one it felt like there was a rush like he had to get through a checklist so he could go kind of thing um but this one was despite the fact that I was the last appointment of the day and they were already running 20 minutes late so technically he probably should have been on his way home like it didn't matter to him he just wanted me to feel like reassured and happy with everything that was discussed and everything um and he actually decided after looking at my test results and things and obviously looking at the scan and taking into consideration like my blood pressure which laughable is classed as normal now which it's never been classed as normal in my life it's always been really really low um but it was classed as like a normal blood pressure so he was happy with that my urine samples were absolutely fine my like um carbon dioxide breathalyzer testing that was absolutely fine so taking all of that into consideration he basically changed it so that I can go full term um and will be induced if I haven't shown any signs of labor <laughs> before that date um I will be induced on my due date so that is very very exciting I can go up to I think it's 40 plus 6 I think and then it will result into an emergency c-section which I'm really hoping I don't get to that point I think I've mentioned it in vlogs before but basically getting in and out of the flat after having a c-section would be chaos and once I'm in here I'd be in here I wouldn't be able to get back out kind of thing um so yeah fingers crossed it doesn't get to a c-section and yeah he basically said I could go full term he was happy for me to go to full term um and if I wanted to I could start from about now to start trying to get that process moving naturally by itself which I have been doing um I probably look like an absolute idiot at times like doing curb walking and going for walks people are like oh she's out again and things like that um but yeah doing all sorts because obviously I can't do the dates or the grapefruit because of the gestational diabetes but other things I can try and sitting in certain positions bouncing on my ball all things like that um to try and get this baby out so I'm hoping as I say to film maybe one more clip to this symptoms type vlog um, but this might be the last one you see if baby girl comes early, although I'm not holding out hope because I was two weeks late, so <laughs> if she's as stubborn as me as she has been the whole rest of this pregnancy, then I've got no chance. Um, however, Ash was like very, very early, so it could go either way, um, see if she takes after on that score, but yeah, that is all for now. <laughs>